ages. Oh my god. Frick, man. Oh my She's god. A Mona Lisa. Everyone's lining up to see her. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Reagan, and today I'm going to be doing my May wrap up. So I know it's kind of weird that I'm in the car. Um, I'm currently in the process of moving. So we're having these people come into our house and stage it so that when they come in to take pictures, it like looks really nice. So they're at my house staging it right now and I knew that I had to film this video or else it was gonna go up so late. So I figured I would just bring all my stuff with me and film in the car. So yeah, and sorry I look like boo-boo trash. I was gonna go home and wash my hair before this video, but that didn't happen. So you just get six day old hair. All right, so let's jump into the video. So I had a really great reading month. I did a lot of reading that was outside of my comfort zone, which I'm really proud of because that was one of my goals for 2020 was to read a lot more books that um, make me uncomfortable or are just out of my comfort zone in general. And I successfully did a lot of that this month and actually enjoyed a lot of it. So let's just go ahead and get started. I have the notes here on my phone of like what I thought about it because wow, these books that I read at the beginning of the month feel like I read them five years ago. So yeah. So the first book I read this month was City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. This is the first book in the Mortal Instruments series. I started this book and I actually did a reading vlog on this book and I will link it above and down below in the description box. This book follows Jason Clary and Clary at the very beginning of the book gets thrown into the Shadowhunter universe and she's realizing all of these things that she's never seen before. Um, all of these mystical creatures like vampires and werewolves and fairies and all these kinds of things and she runs into a group of shadow hunters who kill demons and she begins to work with them because somebody has abducted her mother and she can't find her and she has the sight which is like being able to see all of these other creatures around her and so she's like try maybe part shadow hunter they don't really know and so yeah they go on a bunch of adventures to try to figure some things out. This book was so good. I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really, really enjoyed it. I felt like it was really a setup for the rest of the series. And while I enjoyed reading the book, there were parts of the book that I really felt like was just a lot of setup for the rest of the series, which is okay. I mean, it's like a six book series or seven book series. I don't know. But I started the second one yesterday and I'm really enjoying it so far, so. But it is really good. If you haven't read this, which I don't really know why you wouldn't have because literally everyone and their mom has read this series. But if you haven't, I would recommend to start the series. The next book I read this month was Full Tilt by Emma Scott. This book was so amazing. I gave this book five stars. This book follows Jonah and Casey, and Casey is a rock star, and Jonah is a lim limo driver, and at the beginning of the book, Casey gets super wasted after show one night and Jonah is her limo driver that is supposed to take her home but he can't get her inside so he brings her to his apartment and she stays the night and they wake up and they form this friendship that ultimately they start to fall for each other and it's really sweet and romantic and I really enjoy it. But Jonah is on a timeline. He has a health condition and he has only a certain amount of time left to live. And so it's just their journey of experiencing life together in that time. And this book is incredibly sad and I cried for majority of the book, but it was just so amazing. I literally used a whole box of tissues for this book. It was so good, so sad, so heartbreaking, but the writing was just so good and Man, it was good. I really recommend this book if you want to cry. Next this month, I read Speak by Lori Hulse Anderson, and I gave this book four stars. It was really good. This is a YA book. I found this book at one of those free book libraries, like on the side of the road, and so I just picked it up because the cover was really pretty, but... This book follows a girl named Melinda who is just your average high schooler and I think it's her freshman year of high school and the summer before her freshman year starts, she goes to a party with her friends and something happens at the party and she ends up calling the cops and everyone just thinks that she's a loser and like called the cops to get everyone in trouble but that's not the case and you learn about what happened in the story but over the course of this book, everyone in her class like shuns her and they 
stop talking to her, her friends ditch her, everyone starts bullying her and hating on her, and so she stops talking. Over the, the course of this book, you really see her go through a lot. She struggles with mental health issues, she stops speaking, she just doesn't really see a point to talking anymore. So this book is about so much growth and just overcoming past struggles and how to really learn to speak up for yourself because it's so important to speak up for yourself. So this book had such a beautiful message behind it. I highly recommend this book if you haven't read it. Next up, I read The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I finally got this book. I bought this book about a year ago and read like the first hundred pages and quit right before it got good. Like I did not read far enough because this year I was like, I'm going to pick up The Hating Game again. I'm going to try it again. So this month I figured I would start it over. So I started over from the beginning. Oh my God, there's this girl who's on a longboard and she's just Anyways, back to the hating game. So this book follows Lucy and Joshua and they are coworkers at an office and they are both personal assistants to their bosses who merge together for this publishing company, I'm pretty sure. And they hate each other. And they don't like each other because they just don't like each other. They come to find out that there is a promotion and one of them can apply to get it. And so of course they both think that they want it. And so they hate each other. And so they're like, no, I'm going to get it. No, I'm going to get it. And so they start going for this promotion and like fighting each other for it. So obviously it's a hate to love romance. So they start out hating each other and eventually grow to love each other. But I just thought that the way that this book did it was just so good and so cool. I love the way that in this book, Josh like unapologetically likes Lucy and he he just is so straightforward about it once it comes out that he likes her like he never backs down from it and normally in books like hate to love romances it's the guy who's like really scared of commitment and he's like let's do this but no I'm scared and then let's do this and let's back off but he is so there for her the whole time 100% and I love Joshua Templeman I he's my favorite book boyfriend of 2020 so far. I loved him, his character, everything about him, everything he stood for. I just adored him. And so it just made me love the romance even more. I just felt so connected to these characters and I just adored it. Anyways, it was five stars for me. I highly enjoyed this. Please pick this up if you haven't gotten to it. Next, I was still in a romance mood, but I wanted something slightly different. So I picked up Dark Lover by J.R. Ward. This book is a paranormal romance. So it follows vampires. And this is like a massive series there's so many books in the series and I don't know why I'm just getting to it because this is like one of my all-time favorites now so I don't really know why I've never picked this up before but it was phenomenal I gave it five stars this book follows a girl named Beth and a vampire named Wrath and at the beginning of the book um, Beth's dad reaches out to Wrath and asks him to help Beth through her transition because she is about to become a vampire because she is part vampire and so basically Wrath takes Beth in to help her through the transition but along with that there's also a whole other plot line going on between vampires in general and them battling out their enemies and there's a guy who's like really just trying to kill Raph and so it's a lot of action it's a lot of romance it's just so much of everything that's good and so I loved this book also my favorite character this book hands down was Zadist and I literally cannot wait to read his book because I'm obsessed with him so I said it there just is so much brotherhood in this book and that's something that I really really love not only in books but just in life and in movies and just everything is I love to see guys who are so close that they're like basically brothers and the way that they treat each other is very brotherly and there were so many scenes of this book where oh my god where they just were so brotherly and I just literally cried there's a place I bookmarked it Shh. they ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine you just can't get it there was just a butt on my finger! Okay, so there's this scene, I just have to read it to you, where um, Beth goes and takes care of, I don't know who, one of the brothers, and because he's like sick and throwing up or something, and Wrath is watching her like sing to him while and like comfort him while he's laying in bed. And so she like looks over at him expecting him to be jealous and like mad at her, but she says, shock stilled her, Wrath wasn't mad, far from it. Thank you, he said hoarsely. The bow of his head was almost humble. Thank you for caring for my brother. He took his sunglasses off and looked at her with total adoration. Oh, oh my gosh, no, no. No. Anyways, five stars, pick this up, it's really good. Next up, I picked up 
Vicious Cycle by Katie Ashley. This is a motorcycle romance and it was okay. So this book follows Deacon and Alexandra and Deacon is a guy in a motorcycle club, obviously, and Alexandra is an elementary school teacher. One of her students stopped showing up for class and so she shows up at her father's house and it is Deacon and he, his daughter is Willow, Alexandra agrees to come tutor Willow at the motorcycle club because Deacon didn't want her going to school because he didn't want her to be in danger. And so she starts to come to the motorcycle club and things happen between Deacon and Alexandra. But I think I enjoyed the end more than the middle of the book. I gave it four stars, but I just, it was an enjoyable read for me, but it wasn't like one of my favorites. The one thing I didn't love about this book and part of the reason why I didn't give it five stars completely is because um, it was very insta-lovey to me and I've never really read a whole lot of books that are insta-lovey and so I never really understood when people said like, this is really insta-lovey until I read this book and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so insta-lovey. Like, where was the slow burn? Like, where was the connection? Like, where was that build up? You know, it was just kind of like, oh, there was no talk about them finding each other attractive or even liking each other. And then, bam, they're just going at it. So, I just kind of felt like it was really insta lovey. And yeah, but he is a single dad, and I really love that. This is a pretty good book. The storyline was okay. I enjoyed the ending a lot. A lot of times in these motorcycle romances, it's very damsel in distress y, but this book was not so damsel and distressy so I really liked that about it four stars next up I read the shack by William Paul Young this book is a little beat up it's not my copy I borrowed it from a friend and look at how many um, things that I like stickied and then at the top up there because obviously I'm not gonna write in somebody's book but I stickied and I'm waiting for my copy to come in and then I'm gonna like look at where I stickied and highlight in my own book anyways this book was Oh my gosh, so amazing. This book follows a man named McKenzie, and at the very beginning of the book, he's on a camping trip with his kids, and his daughter goes missing, and they can't find her. Well, they find a piece of her dress all bloodied up in this shack nearby the campsite, and it's like presumed that she's dead, basically. So, I think it's like four years later, um, he's at home one day, and he gets a note in the mail from God, and it's like, come to the shack. So, McKenzie goes to the shack, and he, There's kids running and playing. He just literally threw a rock at my car. I don't think he meant to, it's fine. So he goes to the shack and he has an encounter with God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus. And it is just really amazing if you're into theology or just wanna look at what it looks like to be a Christian. I highly recommend looking into this book. Um, even if you're not a Christian and you don't believe in God, I still recommend reading this book. It was very healing for me and I just enjoyed it so, so much. It was a beautiful story. Next up, I read Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I started this series for the first time ever and I did a reading vlog on this book and the second book and I will link both of those up above and down below in the description box. But this book is so good. I don't even feel like I need to explain what this book is about because everyone's read it or we've seen the movies, but this book follows a boy named Harry Potter who doesn't know he's a wizard. He finds out he's a wizard. He goes to a school named Hogwarts and weird things start happening. That's it. Anyways, this book was five stars for me. I enjoyed it so, so much. The first time I read it, I didn't love it very much, but I really enjoyed it this time around. It was so good, and I think the first time I read it, I didn't think it was very deep, but there's actually very sweet, genuine, deep moments in this book that really just made my heart squish a little bit. But anyways, this book was so good and loved it. Five stars. Um, you can watch the reading blog if you want to get a little bit more information on this one. Next up, I read Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Of course, I loved Sorcerer's Stone so much that I wanted to keep going on with the series. And so I started this book and I will also link the reading vlog if you want a little bit more in-depth review about that. But this book, again, follows Harry Potter. This year he goes back to Hogwarts for his second year and people start being petrified, which means they're just like turned to stone pretty much. Anyways, this book was so good. I loved watching all of the different friendships continue to grow and just get even deeper because because as we get older as people, our relationships get deeper and deeper. And so I just loved this book 
so much. It was it was so good. I think I enjoyed it more than the first one just because there was a little bit more spells and a little bit more magic and I feel like we get even deeper into this wizarding world and I just really really love that about this book. I've heard that the third book is like everyone's favorite and that's when the story just really takes off so I'm really excited to get to the third one. The last book that I read of this month was The Charm of You by uh, uh, Jennifer Probst. I don't have the book with me. I actually own it. I didn't I forgot to bring it but this book was horrendous. Um, I gave this book two stars and I'm like super lenient with my books. I feel like I always rate books like four or five stars. I hardly ever rate books two stars, three stars, and I don't think I've ever rated a book one star before. I, I, I don't know. I just don't pick up books that I think I won't like. But this book deserved every two star that it got because this was horrible. It was so bad. I feel so bad for even talking super bad about a book like this just because like, you know, it's somebody's book, but... It was not good. This book followed a guy named Nolan and a girl named, I don't even, I don't even remember her name. Anyways, regardless, uh, this guy and this girl and they met for the first time in college when she was overweight and they had a night together or something and something went wrong and she hates his guts. And about 10 years later, she is a billionaire and she is a owner of this like huge publishing company. And so Nolan moves back into town where the college is, which is where she lives and he runs into her and she goes to see him at this bar that he's opening up to kind of just be like, what's up, I hate you. And he doesn't know who she is. And so she starts to play with him and string him along so that she can break his heart ultimately. Okay, great. That's the storyline of this book. Had so much potential. It really did, but it just pfft, was not good. Um, the characters were so flat. I was not emotionally connected with them at all. The guy said the cheesiest things I've ever heard, and I don't even think it's because like he was supposed to be a cheesy guy. I think like the writing was just bad. Um, there was a couple lines where I literally was like, aha, and I almost closed the book. I almost DNF'd this book like 10 times. There was literally 30 pages left, and I was like, DNF it. Like, just don't even finish it because why, like, why waste the 35 minutes it's going to take me to read these 30 pages? Like, DNF it. But I didn't because I'm stubborn and I didn't DNF it. But this book was really bad. Two stars. Well, that is all the books that I read in the month of May. I'm pretty sure that's 10 books. I didn't actually count, but I'm pretty sure it's 10. Correct me if I'm wrong. It was a pretty good reading month, um, in my opinion. I think I had mostly four and five stars, except for that last book. But like I said, I feel like I'm really lenient on books, which is something that I want to get better at this year, is just be a little bit more judgmental with my books and really look at them with a more critical eye. But anyways, that was my reading month. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm so sorry I'm in the car and I'm so sorry I look bad, but bear with me for this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe down below. You can also check out all my reviews for these books on my Goodreads, which is going to be leaked down below and all of my other social medias. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye. She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's lining up to see her. There must be something